All right, so every single week, everyone's talking about the chip shortage. Everyone's saying, right. everyone's saying, oh my gosh, I got to find out where I can get stuff uh, from DigiKey, substitutions, part replacements, you name it. And there's only one weekly show that has a weekly segment, The Great Search, brought to you by DigiKey Native, where Lady Ada uses all our powers of good to find the things you're looking for at digikey.com. So only, only powers are good. What are you doing this week? Okay, so let's go to the overhead and I'm gonna show this board off. So this is a board that is, it's okay for now. This is my little i squared pseudo rotary encoder converter. And in the middle here, I've got my Sam D09. The Sam D09 is a very low cost ARM Cortex M0 chip um, that I've got great pricing for. And uh, I use that to read the rotary encoder and then I act as a i squared c peripheral so you can query the peripheral about the rotary encoder that's not having to do the rotary encoder math and pin toggling measurements and uh you know pin changes and neopixel controlling that stuff's all handled by this little coprocessor uh that's controlled over i squared c wonderful and i designed like a whole bunch of different boards that were like it like i i, I designed this board that has like four rotary encoders this one here, which is still it's brand new, when I designed one that has a uh, slide potentiometer. Some folks have seen, you know, over the last few shows, I've designed them, and I designed them all with a Sam D09. And that's when, you know, the Sam D09 got kind of hit by this part shortage. And so, since these boards were just designed, I don't feel too bad about swapping chips before I order PCBs, because if I can't get a chip, there's no point in ordering the PCBs on a Lark. I should get something that I can I can actually acquire in the next, you know, like year or so. So I wanted to, um, there's also a couple things I wanted to improve on this design. Like this, this order encoder, by the way, is like a three year old design, which we finally got out the door, so I'm, which I'm very happy about. Um, but there's some things I could improve. Uh, for example, the SAMD09, now it's a wonderful chip, but it's three volt only, which means that for it to work over STEM QT, the I squared C, I want it to be three or five volt compatible. So I have to have a, you know, a level shifter MOSFET over here and a regulator over here um, for uh, level shifting and, and regulating the possibly five volt power and logic down to 3.3 volts. So one of the things I would like to find is an alternative. If I'm going to get an alternative, I really want to save you know 15 cents a board and and skip those parts because i need you know fewer capacitors that way fewer diodes fewer placements the boards can be smaller um you can see like it's kind of packed in here um but i still wanted to be able to do all the things that i was having the sam d09 do and um finding a chip that can do that i thought i found a good chip and then and then i'll show you it turns out that it was not actually a very good option because i can't get it uh, in any future universe that I can see. Um, but I want to find basically a mic controller that is physically about the same size as this. It's not going to be pin compatible. I'm not expecting that. 3 to 5 volt compatible. Has 8 to 16K of flash. This has uh, 16K of flash memory, but I don't actually need all 16. I, I think I can do with half as much. I do need a, a, a bunch of RAM. I need at least like 256 bytes of RAM. Uh, which doesn't sound like a lot. Um, the I squared C buffer itself, I'd like to be, you know, it's going to be 32 bytes in and 32 bytes out, and then I want to control NeoPixels, and that can be another 64 bytes or so. So it's going to add up quickly. I need 256 bytes at least. I wanted to have an internal crystal. One of the things I really like about this is you notice there's no crystal or resonator. Those are 20 cents, so I want to cut that out too. What I really like about this is that other than the regulator, there's only like you know, one or two resistors and capacitors needed to get the SAMD up, the SAMD09 up and running. So let's get, let's find something that is similarly uh, very easy to, to get up and running. It needs very minimal additional hardware because I don't care if the timing is a little bit slow um, because it's going to be 100 kilohertz I squared C peripheral. It doesn't need to be perfect timing. Yep. General question: Why is the processor rotated 45 degrees on the board? Um, because it, it's, uh, otherwise it would have gone in the way of the, the pads. If, if you look at it, there's, if this was not rotated 45 degrees, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have fit. I wanted it to fit. There you go. And yeah, it just, it wouldn't fit. Uh, okay. So let's go to DigiKey and let's search for this microcontroller. And I'm going to be really flexible about the microcontroller because, uh, so I'm just going to search for microcontroller, which I usually don't, <laughs> right? That's usually. Brilliant. It's like, is it, you know, yeah, 100,000 results. 
So there's a couple different options here, but I really just want embedded. Uh, I want an embedded microcontroller. So let's let's pick that. So yeah, 90,000 options. So let's zoom in a little bit. Um, so we're going to pick only active parts because I want something that I can get in the next, again, year or so. I don't want something, it's, if, if it's discontinued now, it's never coming back. I'm not going to pick stuff that's in stock, but I'm going to pick something that's normally stocking, right? Because obviously there's a lot of stuff that's not in stock, but might be in the next few months. Um, that's okay. You know, if I can get samples, I can always scrounge up some samples. I can get the designs developed. And then by the time the PCBs show up in you know, a month or two, um, I'll be able to go into manufacture. So this already cuts it down by three quarters. Um, so next up, we're going to actually start picking up specifications. So for GPIO, let's pick that first because it's a very easy thing. I, I want at least 12 GPIO. Um, I actually probably want more, but the reason I want at least 12 is, look, I need, I need, you know, two just for the programming pins. There's a couple programming pins. There's a reset pin. And then I want it to be able to control, you know, a couple of, like, four buttons and f uh, maybe, f you know, four NeoPixels and then... I want it to have address selection pins and the I squared C pins and then maybe an IRQ pin. Basically, you do the math and it's like, I need, you know, maybe an activity LED. I need basically 12 GPIO minimum because I don't want to have a different chip for each of these boards, like one for the rotary encoder and one for the um, one with four keys. I want to have one chip for all of them. So I'm going to pick 12 uh, minimum. So I'm going to use the, the min max boxes down here. Um, next up, I definitely only want to have a uh, surface mount part. I am not going to through hole this, so surface mount. For oscillator type, um, I'm going to want, um, I don't know what dash means, but I definitely want not external only. Like external or internal is fine as long as internal is, is available. Um, for program memory type, there's a lot of these types, but basically I just want flash. I don't want EEPROM or UV or OTP or MASCROM or FRAM. Those are all going to be very expensive. Um, flash is the least expensive, most common. So it doesn't actually cut away a lot of things, but just, just gets rid of the, the ones I'm not, definitely not going to use. Okay, so next we can start doing uh, program memory size. So remember I said I need at least 8K. Now, of course... It depends on the compiler and the optimization and the core and how many you know how many bits per instruction. But eight to sixteen k is kind of what I want, right? Because also, if you think about it, you know the original Arduinos were eight eight k, and then um, the they use the Atmega eight, and they moved to the Atmega sixteen, and the thirty two is 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 wonderful. I mean, I can I can keep going, but it's it's going to get more expensive because what you're paying for when you buy microcontrollers is is IO pins, it's not really peripherals because like the peripherals are the peripherals. You're paying for flash, RAM, and pins. They're, the more you want, the more it's gonna cost. But let's just go to 32K. So now we've really cut it down because we've gotten rid of a bunch. Um, okay, so finally, uh, RAM. Well, all these are, you know, these, these all have a, a fair amount of RAM. EEPROM, you know, if it has EEPROM, great. Uh, so the next thing is I'm going to do that power supply because remember I was kind of picky about the power supply. I really want it to run from 3 to 5 volts. In this case, there isn't like a min-max, so I'm just going to pick out the ones that go up to 5. So here's 5, and this goes up to 5, 5.5, 5.2. Um, the 5.5. So you're just going to kind of go through and, and pick up the ones that you want. Oh, as you're doing this, um, yeah. you have not been checking the exclude marketplace and all these? Is that to add possibilities during the shortages? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be picky about that yet. I'm, I'm, I get picky about marketplace later and also usually when, again, as I need something in stock right now and I need it like tomorrow. If, if this is something that I'm planning for long term, I'm going to pick normally stocking because that means it might be out of stock today, but it would be in stock tomorrow. Um, and, um, Marketplace, uh, you know, I'm seeing much more stuff showing up in the marketplace. It's not a bad idea. And the pricing can be better in the marketplace. So the oscillator type, what's the difference between external, internal, and internal slash external? It means that you can have either. It can support, some chips don't support any external oscillator. Like, you can't put a crystal on them even if you wanted to. So, it, I don't care if it allows me to. I just won't connect pins. I won't connect a crystal to it. Okay, so I've picked up all the ones that cover 
3 to 5. There's more here, but of course these go above 3.5 or 3.3, so I don't want them. Okay, so now we're down to about 3,000. Okay, so next up, I'm, I'm actually not going to select a core processor yet, and I'll show you why. It turns out it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I also don't care about the speed so much because all of these are well, they're basically 8 megahertz or above, which is, which is plenty fast for what I'm doing. Um, all of these, I do like that these all have data converters. Um, I'm going to pick only the ones that have uh, ADCs. Some of these have like ADCs and DAX, and you know, that's wonderful. Um, they're all kind of a little different. Okay, so selected all of them, except for the one that has a dash, because I don't want any that don't have ADCs. Almost all microcontrollers these days have ADCs. And then finally, I'm gonna do a supplier package. So if you remember that board, I'm very, I'm actually very picky about the package. Um, I really, really want something that's in QFN, like 16 to 32 QFN, because those are very small. The yield is very good. Um, they're easy to work with, and they're going to come in, in tape and reel, and I just like them. I don't want SYC or SOP. They're going to be huge. I want something very compact. Um, and uh, I found that QFNs, these are sort of my favorite packages. So I'm going to pick out from the supplier device. I'm going to skip the SOICs, TSOPs, and BGAs. You know, depending on your soldering, sometimes people are like, no, I only want SOICs. I want them very easy to solder. Great. Go for it. I want something very compact. So I'm going to pick out the QFNs, QFN, and then you said there's UQFN and VQFN. That's like the density, but I don't really care about those. So there's quite a few of them. That's okay. Let's get through them all. QFN, QFN. Oh, not QFP, not QFP. And then a couple more QFNs here. Although now I'm getting into like, once I'm getting into this many pins, I don't need something with this many pins. 32 is actually kind of the max. Although 33 usually just means the ground plane. So I'm going to, I'll add that in. Okay, so now we've really cut it down. So now we're down to like 400 options. So we're not going to get all the way down to like two, right? That's not, that's not going to happen. However, we can start now. Um, let's look at prices at 1,000 pieces because that's what I care about. So um, there's a couple options here. And I'm not surprised by the options. So the first one is the MS-51, which, which nothing beats how inexpensive it is. Um, However, when um, I went to put it in my cart, because it's like, it's like, well, it doesn't have the lead time here, but you know, I do the little trick where I go, I put it in my cart, and then I click the check the lead time here for a thousand pieces, and it says it's not going to show up here till 2023, which I'm not even sure I'm going to be alive then. I have no idea what my life is going to look like in two years. So that's kind of that's scary to me. Um, so that's why I, I did get a dev board for this before I saw the lead time, but it's, it's, it's a little bit too scary. Um, for the rest of these, um, a lot of these were really good. Um, I will say I selected, yeah, normally stocking. Um, I, yeah, so all these looked, looked pretty good. Um, There was the, um, a lot of these had EEPROM, which I kind of liked. And once I sort of saw that there were ones with EEPROM, I sort of started thinking like, well, I kind of want to optimize um, for those. I want to have EEPROM because it's, it is kind of nice if I can save the I2C address or configuration in it. So I started, like once I saw that there were ones with EEPROM, I said, okay, well, let's filter out the EEPROMs ones. Um, so the next one, so that actually got rid of the MS ones. So there's the ST8S. This one also had a pretty uh, scary lead time. But what I liked is that there were a bunch of ATtiny806 and then 816s. So these were, these were the ones that were available and were um, about like 60 cents in quantity before I even got a quote. And given that I had a choice between you know, basically for the same, it wasn't that much different in price, the STM8 series and the AT Tiny series. I actually ended up um, saying, okay, well, I'm probably going to try the AT Tiny series um, just because I know that there is, you know, an Arduino core for them that I can use so I don't have to write as much code for them. Um, the AT Tiny 8, 
uh, one six in particular I liked. It had both capacitive touch and a DAC. So I ended up getting that one to start because um, I do use uh, capacitive touch for um, the soil sensor and I'm probably gonna have to replace that one. I'm, I'm probably not gonna be able to get that chip either eventually. So I ended up getting um, this as a sample. And what was kind of nice is for the, uh, in my cart, no, one second, go to my cart. When I checked the lead time, it was like, well, it's going to be, you know, August, which was kind of like, which is actually pretty good, like, because a lot of chips are not available till, till next year. So the fact that they're going to have it in a couple months um, was kind of promising to me. I sort of, I like, liked that idea. And they did have SOIC versions of this chip in stock, which I ordered. So I got a dev kit uh, for this board. So I can show it on the overhead real fast for this family. Um, and, you know, this is the 817, which is a little bit uh, bigger, but it has the debugger built in and has, you know, it has capacitive touch, which I thought, again, it was just kind of a neat thing. Buttons and all the GPIOs, and this even has like an Arduino-y pinout. So I can get started with this, and there's the X-Mega Core, um, which uses this chip to uh, give it like an Arduino-compatible core, so I can use things like the wire peripheral code. I don't have to do a lot of porting from the existing Seesaw code I have. Um, I can port it into Arduino, which I'm very comfortable with. I should be able to do that in about a month. And then I can kind of redesign all the boards that I just did into this new chipset. And, and I like it. It's a very, you know, very compact chip, very inexpensive. It's about 50 cents per. Has everything. And then uh, to program it, it actually uses a, a one-wire program, which is asynchronous UART. So I don't even need to have all six, you know, SPI, ISP pins, like most, um, if you like, remember most at Megas or at T-Tinies, you have all six you need six pins, clock, mostly MISO, and reset. You don't need those. You only need uh, the reset pin to program it. So this is my great search. I think this is, I think this chip is the right chip. So I'm going to get some. And uh, if you're looking for a low cost microcontroller, I think this one's going to be in stock. So check it out. And if you're not looking now, don't worry, you will be soon. Okay. So that's the uh, great search tonight. All right. Where in the world?